Hey everybody, thanks for coming and checking out the video on how to prototype with Tilt. My name is Jared Lodwick. If you got here the intended way, then thank you for downloading the Tilt UI kit. If you got here a different way, maybe you subscribe to me, um, follow the link in the description. You can download the UI kit that I release, it is free. And then you can come back here, watch this video, and learn some of the basics on how to make that UI kit come to life. I'll wait for you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to go over a couple of the basic uh, animation styles that I had in mind when creating this UI kit. There are four main levels of hierarchy in here, and that's the base level, the content level, the interaction level, and then the top level. I'm going to show you how to make animations for all four of those levels. What we're going to do is create a few different types of animations for each of these levels, and it's going to give you some information on how you can make your designs come to life. Now, if you're new to Pixate, don't worry. This is a beginner's tutorial. If you are more familiar with Pixate, this is not going to be anything new to you, but I am going to show you the kind of standard, if you want to call it, animations and durations that I use for the stuff within the kit. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you actually how to create uh, the content level, which is the second level. We're going to do that first, just because that contains the scroll card. So what I'm going to do is I just made a new layer. I'm going to rename this to card scroll. Over here in the layer properties, I'm going to turn the appearance down to transparent. And then in my interactions panel, I'm going to add a scroll interaction to this. What this does is says any content that's in here, I can now scroll it if it goes below the fold. Now I've got my layers in here. What you do is can place some of the assets that come with the kit. There's a folder with some of these elements in there. I'm just going to place uh, the card back and then I've got a similarly sized shadow. Back in my Layers tab, I'm going to put the background just on top. It's easier if I do this. And if I select both, I just held Command or Control if you're on PC. Use these Align tools up top. I'm going to center vertically and horizontally. And I'm going to drag these both so that they're uh, on in the canvas. I'm going to make sure they're both at zero. Okay. And then I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to group these together. So I'm going to make this the full width. I just want it to be about the size of the cars. It doesn't really matter. As long as it just contains it, that's just easier. And just like I did before, I'm going to turn the opacity down on this and rename this card. Then I'm going to put the background layer in here with the shadow layer. And what this allows us to do is have both of these elements move together within the scroll container. So then I'll just place that within the container, push this down, and since you can only scroll if content goes beneath the fold, I'm going to come over here, duplicate it, hold shift, push down on the down arrow, and just move it down. There, so now I've got some content that we can scroll. Once that reloads, then I can do that. That's how easy it is to make that scroll container. So now I've got a scroll layer and I can feel my content on it, I can put stuff below it, stuff on top of it. Now I've got that interaction level created. So now let's look at some base level stuff. Um, in here I've got some weather informations from the weather app. And stuff on this level, what this does is it pushes down to signify depth as if it's going backwards and out of view. And the way that I'm going to achieve that is with a couple of animations. I'm going to use a fade animation and a scale animation. I'm going to base this off of the card scrolls scroll position. I'm going to say continuously to final value. I'm going to begin this at zero, and we'll just end it at 200. We'll have this fade out to zero. So as I scroll, it starts to fade out. Now for the scale, I'm going to come in here, also base this off of card scrolls scroll position. I'm going to have this go continuously with rate. You can do it with final value if you want. I'm going to do it with rate just to show you a different way of doing this. I'm going to also limit the scroll range and place it at zero. Now the reason that we're starting this scroll range at zero, even though it already starts at zero, we have to call this out because if I, if I, let's see, if I remove this, so now if I pull it down, it scales one way, but if I go up, it scales the other way. We don't want it to do that. I only want it to go one direction. So I'll place zero right back in that begin field. Now if I pull down, nothing happens, but if I go up, it does. Now this is going the opposite direction, so I'm going to change this rate to negative 0.00. .00. I'm going to add another 0, so it's 
negative 0 0.0005. And as I scroll, that fade goes, this pushes down, just like that. Now I don't want this content to just scale and fade when I scroll. I want it to actually blur out as well, look like it's you know going out of focus. So I've got a layer here that's a, a blurred version. We've got the opacity down. The way that I made that is very easy. In Sketch, here I just got a bunch of stuff. What you'll do is if you just create a new rectangle, it doesn't actually matter what shape. I'm going to use a rectangle because it's easiest. I'm going to just remove the border, doesn't matter. Change the fill to white and then lower that alpha all the way down to zero. Then if I turn on the blur, use background blur, It'll blur the content that's beneath it, and then you can just export this layer itself. Just export this rectangle and place it in there. So that's what I've done, and I've placed it so that it matches up perfectly with the content below it. Turn that opacity down. And then the way that I'm going to have this come in is I'm just going to make a fade animation and a scale animation, just the same as I did with this other layer. Oops, there we go. So the fade is based off card scroll scroll position. And the same way we did it, we're going to do limit the scroll range from 0 to 200. But I'm going to make this fade up to 100% rather than 0. For the scale, same thing, card scroll scroll position continuously with rate. Click limit scroll range. Begin at 0. And then we'll also change the rate back to negative 0 0.0005, three zeros and a five. So now if I do that, you can see, let me move these cards down a little bit, get a little bit better view. There we go. So once that reloads and you can see, it starts to come in and fade out as it goes down. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's do the interaction level. Now this is really a broad name for this level. I honestly just couldn't think of a better name for it. Um, so, but what I'm going to do is show you how to make some of that stuff pop out. Now, we don't really do this in any of the prototypes that you've seen, but it's something that's good to know because it does work out fairly well. I've got it hidden right now. Um, basically, what I've got is two layers here. I've got a copy of this photo without a shadow, and then a copy of it with the shadow. And the way that I did that is by exporting two separate assets within Sketch. Now you'll notice that in the UI kit, a lot of these layers that have shadows on them are just single layers in groups. Well, I did that on purpose, not just to drive you crazy. I did that so that you can export multiple versions of that asset easily. So the actual layer itself, the actual photo, does not have a shadow underneath it, but the group that it's in does. So what we'll do is just export the shadowless version and then export the group with the shadow, and you can get both versions. Then you just place them in, align them up, and then what I did is, similar to the cards, I just created a new layer, created a group, put them inside of it, and now I can move all of this together rather than moving two separate elements. So now I've got that. I'm going to turn the shadow back down. What I want is when the screen loads, I'm going to have this scale up. So now I've got it scaled down to 0.8. What I'm going to do is add a screen or a scale animation to this. We'll just say based off screen load. I'm going to link X and Y and scale this up to 1. I'm going to use an ease out exponential easing curve. That's my favorite one. And I'm going to set the duration to 1.5 seconds. And just since we're doing this based off screen load, I'm going to add a delay of a second just so that we can make sure we're looking at the screen before it happens. Do you see that? Let's watch it again, restart, then it just slowly pops up. Now let's get that shadow so that this actually looks like it's got some depth to it. I'm going to add a fade animation to it. I'm going to set the base off screen, screen loaded. I'm going to have this fade up to 100 using the same easing curve and duration that we did before. Ease out exponential, 1.5 second duration, and a second delay. There we go. So now this actually looks like it's coming at us. Pretty simple. So now what you can do with this, if you want to add some of that accelerometer looking stuff, um, you can add some, some move animations to this and you can 
can make it move based off of a tap. You can experiment with that as much as you want. But then all you have to do is add it to this, this parent layer and it'll move both of these elements together and you don't have to worry about moving individual assets. So the final thing we're going to do is look at this top level stuff. Uh, I'm going to hide this, hide the scroll, and I've got a photo view right in here. You know what this is? A scroll container. It's got an asset in it. And there's a button right here. And we're going to use that. It's got a tap element on it. To create a button, I just made a new layer, added a tap interaction to it. So if I click on this photos layer, I've got a scaled down version of my photo. It's at 0.3, and the opacity is turned down to zero. I'm going to add a few animations to this. First, I want it to fade. I also want it to scale, and then I want it to move into its place. So I'm going to add a fade animation, a scale animation, and then a move animation. These are all going to be based off of the buttons tap, photo buttons tap is what I called it. So I'm just going to set these, get that out of the way, and then we can set our parameters. So for the fade, I want it to fade up to 100%. I'm going to use that same ease out exponential curve, but I'm going to leave the duration of point, uh, to, at 0 0.2 seconds, just because that's nice and quick. For the scale, I want this to scale up to 1. I put this asset in at its final size. That way I don't get any uh, artifacts or anything like that. So set ease out, exponential. I'm going to use a 0.4 second duration. You can change this as much as you want, just whatever you feel uh, looks best. And then I add a move animation. I want this to move its left side to zero because it's the full width of the screen. And for its top, I'm going to have this move to 195.5. That's so it's centered perfectly on the screen. Use that same curve, ease out exponential. And I'm going to use that same duration. Whatever the duration you set for the photo, make it match this is my suggestion. So if I click, it flies out. Now the important part of this layer is the scrim. I made the scrim the same way that I got that blurred layer for the content, only it's just the entire size of the screen. So it's just a rectangle. It's got some stuff here. I have the opacity or the alpha turned up to here so it's on 30 so there's a little bit more color to it. And then I've got this right here. I just exported this and placed it in Pixate. Oops, all right. So now what I'm going to do is just add a fade animation based off photo buttons tap. We're going to make this fade to 100, and I'm going to use that same easing curve just to keep it consistent. We'll use a 0.2 second duration because it's quick. Now when I click, it looks pretty good. So that's the basics of prototyping with Till. I hope that this was helpful for you. If you're interested in learning more about Pixate, check out the rest of the videos on my YouTube channel. I cover everything from basic stuff to expert level material. You'll be able to use Sketch, use this kit, make a really cool design, and then do whatever you want and make it come to life in Pixate. Make it look really great, I promise. Thanks for watching, thanks for using the kit, and I'll see you next time.